Presenting for us today will be in the following order. Joe Hanslick and Megan Bott. No, Megan, no, no. <laughs> in community relations with the West Texas VA healthcare system. Good morning. Good morning. As most of you know, I am Abigail Hosler, I'm Community Relations Coordinator at the VA, and I'm proud to be here this morning. Mr. Marston, in regard to that, that he cannot be here, he is in Tucson. He's much rather than in the spring of Tucson, but uh, uh, duty calls, so he has to go. Um, I have to tell you about one week I've had this week before I start writing about our hospital. All of you remember that were here, that lived here back in 2003. That when we lost one of our first veterans, that was a Marine, and he was Chad Metcalf from Oklahoma. This week, I had a visitor to come in from Atlanta. His name was Bob Robert or Bob Winkle. And when he got here, I kind of recognized the face. I wasn't sure, and I said, "What have I seen the face for? 21 years of service to our country as a." when he retired as a lieutenant colonel. He was the lieutenant colonel that was the battalion chief for Chad's group. And he came and he conducted the memorial service at Oklahoma ISD. And I had such a good time with Bob Winkle. And I would say more later on, but we cannot thank our veterans for our freedom today. Bob continues to call John Wayne and Ginger twice a year on Chad's birthday and on Chad's day of death. He's been retired for over three years, but he will never forget this today. And what a remarkable citizen of our United States of America. We cannot, we cannot be proud enough about it. That's enough before I get to know. Okay. I am very pleased to tell you, and most of you know, West Texas VA does serve 33 counties. As Ed was talking about his primary service area, the hours is very, very large. Our primary service area is larger than 33 states in our United States. You know, our VA medical system here in Big Spring is a very, very, very small system for our VA family but it is a very big entity in thanks to you guys in this community for what you have done to help support us and continue to serve veterans. Our facility in Big Spring will always be here in Big Spring, I feel, for many, many years. I do not feel that we will go through any other studies or realignment reviews anytime in the next several, several years. <coughs> are we changing? Obviously, yes, we are. Healthcare is changing all over the United States. It's not just in our VA world. Uh, Dan Marsh is probably one of the most outstanding directors I have ever had the opportunity to work for. He's very, very dedicated. He is a veteran, but he is very dedicated to provide the best care to our veterans that we can provide in this community. And that is not going to be opening up a cardiology unit. It is not going to be opening up any orthopedic specialty unit or surgery. The need is not there. Quality care is far more important to Mr. Marsh and the staff at the VA. What we are going to do, we are going to do well. And some of the things I will share with you this morning quickly is some of the things we're expanding, the things we're doing. As Ed mentioned, we have two telehealth programs. We do, we have more than just two, but two of our newer ones that are very exciting. It's, we have a telehealth anticoagulation plan. We have a clinical pharmacist in Big Spring. For those of you that are on any kind of warfarin medications or any kind of blood thinners, it's very difficult when you have a critical value. It may take 24, 36, 48 hours before you know the result of that blood test in many cases. Today, with our anticoagulation telehealth, our veterans in Abilene, San Angelo, Odessa, and Hobbs go there and they may have to have a blood draw for other tests, but from their human level, they just do a blood stick, it's a, it's a glucometer. Within five minutes, the results of that is on the clinical pharmacist's desk here in Big Spring. 
the clinical pharmacist, Dr. Cornish, right now, and that veteran get on the two big screen computers, and they're talking about that blood level and what changes should be made. Within five, ten minutes, changes are made in the, their medication, whatever needs to be done. And that has really, really, really impacted the results of, of I mean, for those of you who have ever had to be on blood thinners, I mean, it is very, very important that those levels are, are as normal as possible. So that's one of our, our really, really neat programs that we're very proud of. Within the last month, we started our vascular telehealth program. Right now, we're working with the vascular surgery department in, in Albuquerque. And when someone needs to go in possibly for surgery, they will do their vascular telehealth with the surgeon the pre-op on the telehealth unit here in Big Spring. They communicate with the patient and, they, and it presents the pre and the post-op on the any kind of surgeries and vascular care. Uh, we're doing everything we can to help deliver more care to the veterans in their area and we are very, very proud of that. Some of the other new programs, uh, well, let me go back to the Right now, in this 33 county, that is about 56,000 square miles. Within that square mile area, we, there's a veteran population of 57,651, the last data that was reported to us. Out of those 56,000 veterans, we are serving approximately 17,000 veterans. Of course, our goal is to continue to increase our veteran population and, and that are receiving health care through the VA system. Uh, I was at a restaurant last night and this nice young man came up and of course he was giving us a hard time and we were giving him a hard time. We were like we're cutting up and we found out he was a, a Marine. He served four years. And of course my first question is have you enrolled in health care? Well no, I, I didn't do anything. Well he just been out a year and I said you have five years of free health care. You need, oh no, 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 I don't, I don't need and, and this is most the mentality that these young folks are having. If they didn't lose a limb or, you know, they don't think they should access any health care. These are the kind of folks we want to reach out to and let's get them enrolled so they will be eligible for the, you know, the rest of their life. But if you know veterans that are not enrolled, get them to contact us to see if there's any way we can figure out a way to, to enroll them in VA health care. Uh, we just received a mobile health clinic. This mobile van has two exam rooms, a registration in the middle of it, and we are going to start going out in areas in the very near future like La Mesa, Snyder, and then farther down in the Big Bend area. You know, a lot of our veterans have to drive even 100 miles to get access to the Fort Stockton Clinic. We're trying our best to carry more and deliver more services to the veterans in their area than, and, instead of having them to drive to us for healthcare. And that mobile clinic, you won't see it much in Big Spring unless there's activities or events, but uh, it will be going out to the community in the very, very near future. Some of the other programs that we are very proud of that we've uh, expanding our Abilene Clinic, they started, or they will start construction next Tuesday, and they promised us within 90 days we will be moved into a new space in Abilene. Uh, when we move into these new clinic areas, we're going <coughs> to provide physical therapy, audiology, optometry services. We're going to, again, take more services out to the veterans to not require them to drive to Big Springs. But uh, following Abilene will be the Odessa Clinic and then the San Angelo Clinic. Uh, the, some of the other programs, other than the telehealth programs, our 40 bed domiciliary, we had a ribbon cutting back in February, but there were some mechanical issues that we could not accept that <coughs> construction project until just about three weeks ago. We are fortunate that we have about 20 residents in that program today. They're continuing to admit because we continue to have a waiting list for that program. Our domiciliary program is called our Veteran Healing Center, and that is a long term residential rehab program for our veterans. And Right now, they're focusing on the alcohol and drug use, but they'll also be uh, working on some mental health cases to, that just need some guidance and direction to help them get back and to return to uh, community life and, and employment in the community. The, uh, we have a home-based primary care program, and of course, 
along with every one of these programs, there's eligibility and, and restrictions and requirements of how you can qualify for these programs. But we do have a team, and it is a, right now it's a nurse practitioner, nursing staff, that, and, and other ancillary staff as necessary, that can travel within a 60 mile radius of Big Spring and go to the homes of veterans that absolutely cannot make it to the hospital or to their clinic appointments. Right now, it's at 50 miles from Big Spring. We are working on the team for Angelo, Abilene, and Odessa. So if we can get 60 mile radius around those three areas, that will almost saturate our, our whole primary service area. So we are, we will continue to focus and work on uh, implementing and expanding that program. We have our uh, uh, court, uh, care coordinated home telehealth, I think that's the acronym, TPHD. <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, that program is, we have monitors in homes of, of veterans that can take their blood pressure and record them. And, and if they're out of line, our, our care coordinated home telehealth staff will immediately call those folks because it's all on machines and it's all computerized and we'll see it immediately. But we're expanding every area of technology we can to assist our veterans and, and try to deliver care to them that they so deserve. Uh, I actually am kind of glad I'm about the last one. I uh, had the opportunity to go last Friday to the American Legion State Convention and actually I had not planned to be there but last minute changes uh, I, I was pleased I got to go and while we were visiting with all the different folks out there I sat there and was visiting with a wife of a major that is on his I think 16th year in service and her children were like six and nine years old they were visiting their grandparents in Odessa when they were there at the convention and dad was involved in American Legion and uh, we were just were chit-chatting about the our veterans and our, our service members and, and I want y'all to know how what an impact and, and I know there's veterans in this room and I, I thank you for your service but the families have a tremendous impact when their when their service members are overseas her husband is in Afghanistan and his first trip overseas he had to leave when the little girl was six months old he had to serve 18 months. He did not get back in country until that baby was two years old. Well, of course, she's a toddler. She's running and playing. Dad was a total stranger. She did not know that. And the readjustment that the whole family has to experience is, is just is valuable. So as we celebrate our Independence Monday, let's please not forget to thank any of the veterans that you are around for their service. Thank their families. Thank all of them. So it is a family event. Thank y'all for inviting me today. I'm sorry Mr. Marsh couldn't be here. I hope I didn't go on my story. <laughs> <laughs> Some of it not too happy, but uh, you know, we are very, very blessed with all these leaders, and uh, we we should thank each and every one of them for all that they do for our community. We're so glad that you're all here with us. Thanks.